What's my epigenetic age? The best clock for predicting epigenetic age is the Horvath clock, and we'll go through that data in a minute. But the Horvath clock may not be best for evaluating the epigenetic rate of aging. In contrast, Dunedin Pace is potentially the best epigenetic clock for predicting the epigenetic rate of aging. So with these data in mind, for epigenetic test number six, what's my data? And to assess that, I sent blood to True Diagnostic, and for those who are interested, there'll be a discount link in the video's description. So let's start off by taking a look at Horvath data. So why is Horvath's clock considered the best for predicting chronological age? And that's what we'll see here. On the y-axis, we've got DNAM, or DNA methylation age, otherwise known as epigenetic age. And you can see in parentheses is the Horvath, or Horvath clock. And this is plotted against chronological age from birth up to 100 years old. And then there are many different colored circles on this plot. This is a multi-tissue clock. And there we can see the significant and strong correlation for the Horvath epigenetic age with chronological age. More specifically, we can see that that correlation is 0.94. Now note that a perfectly linear correlation is when that correlation coefficient is 1. So that's why Horvath's clock is considered the best epigenetic clock for predicting chronological age, because its correlation is so close to a perfectly linear correlation of 1. Now note that the Horvath clock is also known as Intrinsic Epigenetic Age Acceleration, or IEAA. And that's how True Diagnostic sends that data, as the intrinsic age. So with that in mind, what's my data? So for the test number six in April of 2023, we can see that my intrinsic age, or Horvath age, was 50.78 years, which may seem pretty bad because that's one year rounded up, more specifically 0.55 years older than my chronological age. But note that this is my lowest Horvath epigenetic age data over six tests, which then raises the question, which factors may be related to a youthful, more youthful or older Horvath age? And with that in mind, the most obvious bet that I would think, at least based on the data in terms of correlations, is the average daily body weight. And this is six, uh, six data points over the past two years, 2022 to 2023. So on the y-axis, we've got the IEAA, or Horvath epigenetic age, plotted against the average daily body weight in pounds. And note that this isn't the body weight on the day of the test. If there are 50 days in between tests, it's the 50-day average body weight that then corresponds to test number two. And I do that for every test. So I have a body weight and actually food intake and a whole bunch of other variables that line up with each blood test. And that's how I'm able to evaluate correlations. So for this plot, we can see a significant positive correlation. In other words, a relatively higher body weight, in my case, it may not be true for others, and this is only six data points, it may change over time. A relatively higher body weight is significantly correlated with an older Horvath epigenetic age, which then raises the question, what will happen if I'm able to further reduce my body weight? And note that this is almost exclusively a fat reduction, as I'm not trying to lose any lean mass or any skeletal muscle mass. What will happen to my epigenetic, Horvath epigenetic age if I'm able to get to 145 and even below? And uh, so my body composition at about 151 pounds was 12% body fat. So based on that, assuming I haven't lost any muscle, I'm currently about 9% body fat. So I can get to about 140, that would be 6% body fat. So I do have some room to lose some fat to test this correlation for body weight with Horvath epigenetic age. So stay tuned for that in future videos. All right, so what about foods? Foods that are significantly correlated with a younger Horvath epigenetic age. And note that I included all foods for this, all the foods that I eat for this analysis, and no foods were significantly correlated with an older epigenetic age. In terms of foods significantly correlated with a younger Horvath epigenetic age, there were only two. And that's what we can see here with parsley and tomato. So let's just go through it. So the little r, lowercase r, is the correlation coefficient. And note that the correlation coefficient is negative which suggests that a relatively higher intake of these foods is significantly correlated with a younger Horvath epigenetic age. We can see that the p-value as a measure of statistical significance with 0 point, less than 0 0.05 being a significant uh, correlation. And note that I didn't account for false, the false discovery rate, FDR. Uh, so these could be true positives, but they could also be false positives. And the, the best way that I think to evaluate that is by increasing parsley or increasing tomato. And if the correlations uh, are indeed causation, I'd expect to see a younger Horvath epigenetic age in that case by going higher. If the, if the Horvath epigenetic age doesn't get younger with higher intakes of these foods, the correlations will then become weaker. And that's how I can get at testing causation. All right, so then I've got the intake range and then my intake for the last test. So based on these inverse correlations, 
uh, that suggests I should go higher, relatively higher, with the goal of reducing uh, the Horvath epigenetic age, again, if correlation equals causation. And we can see, just using parsley as an example, that that was true. The high intake uh, of my range for parsley is about 51 grams. For my last test, that's where it was. And similarly for tomatoes, high intake of my range, uh, about 118 grams per day. For the last test, that's exactly what I took in. So I'm following the correlations with the goal of uh, using, trying to use food, body weight, and everything else to try to keep my Horvath epigenetic age low. All right, next up, Dunedin Pace. So first, why Dunedin Pace? Now, Dunedin Pace, as I mentioned earlier, Dunedin Pace may be the best epigenetic clock for evaluating the epigenetic aging rate. And I covered this in more detail in an earlier video that I'll, I'll link in the right corner. So if you missed that analysis, uh, check it out. But let's just go through a relatively quick run through to see why this may be true. So on the y-axis of these two plots, we've got the change in two different epigenetic clocks, change in Horvath and change in another epigenetic clock, Hanum, that's provided by True Diagnostic that I've shown in earlier videos, but I won't go through that data in this video. So the change in these two epigenetic clocks in people who are on an ad-lib diet, AL, or a calorie-restricted diet, CR, and more specifically, it was 12% CR that was sustained over a two-year period. So accordingly, there are three time points. Baseline, after 12 months on a CR diet, or 24 months or actually on a CR or the ad-lib diet. Now, for both these epigenetic clocks, we can see that neither identified a significant reduction in epigenetic aging over that two-year period, whether using the Horvath or the Hanum clock. NS means non-significant. Similarly, two other gold standard epigenetic clocks, Levine's PhenoAge, and this isn't the blood-based biomarker one that I'm always showing. This is the epigenetic version of that clock. So Levine's PhenoAge and GrimAge, uh, those tests too were not able to detect a significant reduction in epigenetic aging for people on CR when compared with AdLib. But where it gets interesting is that Dunedin Pace was able to identify a difference. And we can see that both at the 12 and 24 month time points. In other words, Dunedin Pace was the only epigenetic clock of these five to identify a slower epigenetic pace of aging for people on CR for two years. Now, this is just one study, one, one head-to-head -head study. And as far as I know, there aren't others that have looked at head-to-head -head Dunedin Pace against all of the other epigenetic age, uh, epigen epigenetic age clocks. So I'm curious to see how this story plays out. If Dunedin Pace will be identified as the one that's only able to identify epigenetic aging changes as a result of a given intervention, or if other clocks will prove to be better. But at least for now, and based on this one study, epigenetic, uh, the, the Dunedin Pace may be the best epigenetic clock for evaluating the epigenetic aging rate. So with that in mind, what's my data? So for the April 24th test, my Dunedin Pace value was 0 0.76. So what does that mean? The slowest uh, epigenetic aging rate using Dunedin Pace would be 0 0.6. And what that means is for every one year of chronological age, epigenetic age increases by 0 0.6 years. Conversely, 1.4 is the fastest epigenetic aging rate. So for every year, one year of chronological age, epigenetic age increases by 1.4 years. So my Dunedin Pace value for this test of 0.76 indicates that for every one year of chronological aging, I've aged 0.76 years. Or more specifically, I have a standard normal epigenetic aging rate up until about September, early September. And then for the last three and a half months or so of the year, there's no epigenetic aging. That's another way to look at it, a little cutesy way to look at that, that data. Now, this is just one test. How does this test compare with previous tests so we can have more context? So for the first, uh, three tests in 2022, my average Dunedin pace was 0.837. And thus far in 2023, over three tests, my average is 0.777. And when using a two sample t-test, the difference for these two years in terms of Dunedin pace is right at the border of statistical significance. You can see that that p-value is 0.052. So hopefully I can continue with relatively low Dunedin pace and we'll see if 2023 data will be statistically reduced relative to 2022. Now, as a side note, note that 0.777 may allow me to enter the top 10 for the rejuvenation leaderboard. And that is a real thing. It does exist as shown here, the rejuvenation Olympics. I'll put the link in the video's description. And what that includes is the average of three Dunedin Pace tests across six plus months. And this is the current top 10 based on data, not data that doesn't include my current data, but I think this was the May update. So we can see that my 0.777 would put me in a tie for ninth maybe at worst 10th, assuming that the top 10 doesn't change in, term, in terms of Dunedin pace. 
prior to this test, I was number 21. And prior to the test before that, I was number 20. So it'll be nice to potentially move into the top 10. All right, so that raises the question then, how am I doing it? Which variables are significantly correlated with Dunedin pace? So let's start off with foods and the first group of foods being significantly correlated with a slower Dunedin pace. And that's what we can see here. On that list is cinnamon and salt. And we can see that the correlation is negative, which means that a relatively higher intake of these foods is significantly correlated with a lower or slower Dunedin pace. When I say significantly, again, that's with the p-value less than 0.05. So when considering that these are negative or inverse correlations, that suggests that I should eat at the high intake of my range. If correlation equals causation, that should lead to a slower Dunedin pace. And using cinnamon as an example, we can see that that's true, but it was also true for salt on this test. Now, what about food significantly correlated with a faster or Dunedin pace that's going in the wrong direction? And that's what we can see here, coconut butter and dates. So now we can see that the correlation coefficient is positive. So a relatively higher intake of these foods is currently significantly correlated with a faster or an older or going in the wrong direction than eat and pace. We can see that the p-value is less than 0.05. And in terms of the intake range and the last test, this suggests that I should eat at the low end of my range. And while we can see that that's true for coconut butter, uh, dates can actually go a little lower. Now, as I mentioned, these, these are just correlations. And the way I test the way I test it without calculating the false discovery rate is by going following the correlation. So if the correlations are positive, keeping coconut butter to the low end, or, or even for dates, I, I didn't reduce my date intake. It's actually a little bit higher. So we'll see how that correlation reevaluates after the next round of tests. Now, what I haven't shown yet, though, is body weight and calorie intake, which I'd expect to be significantly correlated with the need and pace, especially when considering the calorie restriction study that I just showed. But in my case, after six tests, body weight and calorie intake are not significantly correlated with Dunedin pace. And that's what we can see here. Although the correlations are currently positive, in other words, a relatively higher body weight and calorie intake are correlated with an older Dunedin pace or a faster Dunedin pace, we can see that the p-value, they are not statistically, statistically significant. Sorry, that's hard to say. The p-value is greater than 0 0.05. So after six tests, body weight and calorie intake, in contrast with the published data so far, not significantly correlated with Dunedin pace. So test number seven is scheduled for uh, coming up pretty soon, July 2023. So stay tuned for future videos to see how this pro uh, progresses. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links and merch that you may be interested in, including discount links for at-home metabolomics, NAD quantification, green tea, epigenetic testing, as mentioned in this video, oral microbiome composition, at-home blood testing with SciFox Health, and note that their panel of biomarkers is almost exclusively different from the at-home metabolomics, diet tracking, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, Buy Me A Coffee. We've also got merch, so if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Diet Trying brand, that link and all the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.